as the control center for some 221 Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missiles. Malmstrom Air Force Base near Great Falls, Montana is an essential part of the nuclear arsenal for the United States. For decades, Malmstrom and other strategic air command centers like it have been the primary potential targets for the country's enemies. But many UFO experts wonder if these bases have also been attracting a different kind of attention. Are America's nuclear installations UFO hotspots? One interpretation of UFO activity is that these entities, assuming that they are entities, are interested in our technological development. We're a very violent uh, species, as, as you know if you watch television at night. So that, that alone is a reason that they would have to pay attention to what we're doing. March 16th, 1967. Reports of UFOs at Malmstrom seem to demonstrate an extraterrestrial interest in America's nuclear forces. The way it happened, according to Robert Salas, who was stationed underground in one of the missile complexes, was that he received a phone call from a security guard on, up on top, up on ground level, saying, in effect, that there was a large, red, glowing, disc-shaped object hovering in front of the facility. And the guards were extremely frightened about this, as you can imagine. He kind of laughed and sort of said, you know, back off. The security guard called a second time, saying uh, even more panicky that the UFO was now hovering right outside the gate and was very close. They were observing the, the status board in the launch complex, and they noticed that the missiles started going offline. Clunk, 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 clunk. Ten of the missiles, one at a time, just boom, 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 shut down. The missiles quit functioning. So we were really out of business as a nuclear deterrent at that time. The incident at Malmstrom is neither the first nor the last time that the security of the United States nuclear sites is supposedly compromised by a UFO incursion. This supposed trend in UFO activity is noticed as early as 1952 by Captain Edward Ruppelt, the first chief of Project Blue Book, the Air Force's official investigation of UFO reports. Ruppelt discovers what he calls an ominous correlation between UFO sightings and the locations of the nation's nuclear facilities. If you're in the military and someone is displaying an interest in your strategic capabilities, it's an alarming situation. It raises national security questions. A lot of investigation went on to determine what could happen. The Boeing company that was responsible for some of the equipment was involved. The U.S. government was involved in investigations. The actual reason for so many uh, missiles going down simultaneously was a big puzzle. They found absolutely um, that an, an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, may have fried the electronic workings in the missiles. However, there was no attempt whatsoever to relate the EMP, the pulse, to the presence of a UFO outside. In fact, the, the presence of the UFO out on the perimeter was dismissed as hearsay. But the source of the EMP, a radiation wave that disturbs the function of electronic equipment, remains undetermined. And the government has never explained why so many missiles malfunctioned at the same time. It's important to bear in mind that these missiles are designed to be independent systems. So if you do something to affect one missile, it won't affect all the other missiles because they're totally separate. So whatever caused this event, was able to shut down a whole variety of missiles that were spread around a large geographical area around the launch control complex. Fewer than 10 years later, five strategic air command bases, including Malmstrom, are placed on high priority alert as a result of repeated reports of UFOs over nuclear weapons storage systems. In 1975, right along the Northern Tier frontier, in many of the different Air Force bases, Falcon Bridge in Ontario, Canada, Loring Air Force Base in Maine, Wordsmith Air Force Base in Michigan, Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, and Malmstrom Air Force Base in uh, Montana, all experienced a series of unidentified objects. The general theme was that Air Force space was being violated 
at random by a series of aircraft that should not have been there. At each of the bases, official logs record eyewitness accounts of the UFOs, and they are tracked by radar as well. In each case, the UFO reportedly hovers above the base, specifically the weapon storage area, for up to 40 minutes. All attempts to intercept or positively identify the UFO from the ground or with fighter jets in the air fail. The incursions are brought to the attention of the Commander-in-Chief of NORAD, the North American Air Defense Command. An investigation ensues. The initial um, thinking behind the, the unidentified objects over the Air Force bases in the northern tier was thought to be potentially Russians or else some other enemy. The only information we have is that the eyewitnesses described objects that behaved in a very unusual fashion. They, that they glowed red, for example, and it doesn't sound like any technology that the Soviets had at that time. The Air Force personnel were completely at sea as to what was happening. They were actually calling the law enforcement people in Great Falls, Montana for help because unidentified aircraft were buzzing them in missile control silos. They had no idea what was going on. Aside from acknowledging that unexplained events have occurred at the Northern Pier bases, the U.S. government remains characteristically silent on the question of whether American nuclear installments are indeed UFO hotspots. To my knowledge, there's no published report uh, explaining what happened. It's simply a mystery. And as far as the government is concerned, it can remain a mystery. According to the Air Force fact sheet on UFOs published in 1996, no evidence has been presented to indicate that further investigation of UFOs by the Air Force or other government agency is warranted. But for some, the base sightings are not quite as open and shut a case as the government would have us believe. We think the reason that the military tend to downplay this whole phenomenon is because the Department of Defense, by definition, needs to defend. And if theoretically there are objects that are able to violate United States airspace with impunity, that sets up a very big question mark about the efficiency and the abilities of the Department of Defense. But they are as bewildered and as puzzled and as intimidated as, as everybody else is.